Welcome guys to this a little uh, hard surface modeling course. Okay, so um, I've released a course uh, quite a long time ago on creating a motorbike. Uh, see the link below for a coupon to this course on Udemy. Now, um, I just want to do a bit of a tutorial here on creating some uh, sort of nuts and bolts and those sort of things. So I'm going to start off by just grabbing a, um, a cylinder 3D here. I'm going to drag that out on the canvas and go straight into edit mode. And I'm going to go down to initialize, just change a few of these settings. So what I want to do is I want this to be a kind of um, nutty bolty type thing. And I don't really need height one, so I'll take that V divide down. And I'm going to go and make that a poly mesh 3D now that it's um, set there. Okay, so I'm going to go to scale. And uh, I turn perspective off when I'm working like this. So it just makes it easier. And I'm going to go down and just drop this down in size like this. Okay, so we've got a kind of bolt. It's not hexagonal, but it's kind of interesting. So what I want to do now is I want to put some bevels on this. So I'm going to go into our Z Modeler brush. That's BZ on the keyboard. Find the Z Modeler. We're going to go over the edge here. I'm going to go to bevel and then we're going to go edge loop complete. And I'm going to bevel this edge in to give us a nice beveled surface there. Okay, that looks good. All right. Right, that's good. Right, so over one of the pieces here, I'm just going to go in and we're going to do an insert and single edge loop and this will put a, an edge loop around this and what I want to do is pull this out slightly so I'm going to make sure that I'm on Q mesh and I've got this little orange thing facing around this edge loop then I'm going to press the space bar I'm going to go poly loop poly group so that it activates the loop around make sure Q mesh is on so by activating poly loop and poly group I'm actually going to be able to pull this out like this then I'm going to go into the edge again, I'm going to go straight back to bevel, edge loop complete, and I'm going to drag this out a little bit here and do something like that. So this will now resemble a kind of hexagonal bolt type thing. Now I want to put a little cross piece in here, at the moment this geometry is triangulated, so I'm actually going to delete out some of these um, triangles here, these lines, so that it gives me a quad. So I'm going to go over this, I'm going to go to delete. Okay, and we're just going to click on here. I'm going to delete these alternatively. And that's why I went for a figure there. Now that hasn't worked out there, but to be honest, it doesn't matter at this stage because we're going to, in fact, I don't even need to do that. Don't know why I did that. Ignore me. Should have made sure that that was even so that I could take those quads out, but doesn't matter. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and grab a cube 3d and I'm going to go to initialize and I'm going to take these initialized settings right down to their lowest division something like that is going to be fine and I'll make that a poly mesh 3d and inside here I'm going to actually just delete this edge so I'm going to right hand click make sure delete edge and edge loop complete and I'm going to click on there and it'll get rid of that edge because I don't need that edge for what I'm trying to do here okay now over this polygon I'm going to go single poly Q mesh and I'm going to pull this out like that okay now to repeat that last step I'm going to go over this one and click it it just repeats the last one I just did and I've got something like that which looks good all right so now that's done what I can do is I can actually use this as a boolean in my other piece so I'm going to go back to my other piece here and I'm going to go down to the subtools. I'm going to go to append. I'm going to append in this little square piece here, which we're going to scale. I'm going to scale that down. We're going to get it in position. Just lock it into position on here. And I'm going to activate Boolean now. So I'm going to activate live Boolean. I'm going to click in here and it will take it away. I'm just going to turn polygroups off. And you can see now I've got that little cross in there and I can move that up and down. Um, I can move it in a little bit if it's a bit too big and get something like that. And what I can do from here is I can actually make this a U mesh. So at the moment I've got Boolean turned on, so it's actually uh, two meshes here. But when I create the Boolean, it will create one mesh. So I'm going to go down to Boolean here and I'm going to go make Boolean mesh. Now you're going to see that appear up here under U mesh. So click that and this is what we've got. If I go into polygons, you can see this is how it's kind of worked it out. 
So it's kind of put it in like that. All right, but that's enough for us to use as an insert brush. Okay. Right, so now you've got it like that. You can see it's actually got different poly groups in here. Yeah, and I'm going to make it one poly group. So I'm going to go Control W, just make that one poly group. Press it a couple of times, get a different color. And now we're left with something like this. So if I make this face us like this, and if we turn floor on, you can see the floors there. So we're on the floor plane. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make that an insert brush. So now what I'm gonna do is come over to the brush palette. And I'm gonna go down to create insert brush. I'm gonna go new and we're gonna, I actually I need to go back one, sorry, apologies. Let's just go back to a standard brush. And in here, I just wanna name this. So I'm gonna name this um, screw head one okay and let me just do the right spelling for that and i'm going to hit enter okay because i have to rename it so that the insert brush will be named that so i'm going to go back down create insert brush it's going to say do you want to append it or add a new one i'm going to go new now up here you can see there's a screw head one so with that brush and i'm going to keep this for a second because i'm going to show you a different method in a sec but if I go to a Sphere 3D, turn off poly frame, turn off the floor, uh, make this a poly mesh 3D, and subdivide it a couple of times, Control D, or come down to geometry, Control D. I'm just gonna delete lower, as you gotta make sure when you use an insert brush that you haven't got subdivision levels, because if I try and use subdivision levels, you're gonna get this error. So I've just increased the resolution. I'm just gonna delete lower. It's all right, we can split it out, it's not a problem. And now if we have this brush activated and I click, you're gonna see that we can create an insert brush there, straight on there. Now, because it's got, these have got one, this is actually split into two poly groups. So we created one poly group for this area and this area. It means we could split this out if we wanted to. So I'm just gonna put a few more of these all over the place. And you'll notice that as you draw them out, it'll mask the other ones. And this allows you to actually go in and move this piece around because all the others are masked. Okay, so when you're finished with this, what you can do, remember this is one poly group and this is another poly group. So we could actually split this. So if I press the control and drag just to unmask everything, I can now come into the sub tools and go down to split and I can actually group split. So I can go group split, click okay. And what you've got now is separate ones from this. So these are now on their own. So I split them up and that's the original there. So that's an insert brush. To save that out or to append a new brush to it, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to this screw head here, the original one that we created, which was this um, Boolean version. And what I can do with this is I can do some variations. So I can do some little changes. So I'm just gonna turn Boolean off now and I'm going to delete out this bit here, click okay. And what we'll do is we'll create something else in the middle. So I'm gonna go to the tool here and go to our cube 3d and down to the initialize oh, i've got the wrong one here sorry i just need to go to the cylinder there and what we'll do is we'll make this eight so we've got a hexagon. And what I'll do is I'll even bevel this. So I'm gonna go make Polymesh 3D, come back into this Z remodeler, go bevel, edge loop complete, and I'm gonna bevel it like that. Okay, create a little bevel at the edge. Cool, right. So what I can do now is just to rename this. I'm only renaming it so it's easy for me to see. I'm just gonna put any number in here and uh, it just makes it easier. So when I go back to this, I can now append it. Notice by putting that number in there, it's much easier to see which one you added. And once I've got it in there, I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna take this, gonna move it up. And I'm gonna turn Boolean on and activate it here. Just turn Polyframe off. And this is what I've got now. So notice that bevel in there. So I'm gonna bring this up. And now we've got another type of head now, what I can do with this again is create a U-mesh from this. So I can go down to Boolean again, 
create a U-mesh. That'll appear up here as a U-mesh, yeah? Something like that. I'm gonna just polygroup this, Control W. Just make that a couple of times, something like that. Okay, good. And now I'm gonna rename it. We're gonna call this uh, Screw Head 2. I'm gonna click yes to that, so Screw Head 2. I'm now gonna go and find that brush that we just created, this one here, Screw Head 1. And with this facing me, press the Shift key, make sure perspective is off. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna go create insert brush and this time I'm gonna append it. So I'm gonna click okay. And now you can see I've got two versions. So if I go back to my original sphere that we created, there we are, where are you? Here, I can click this, let's turn this one off. And now I've got the ability to pull this one out. Uh, if I press M on the keyboard, I can switch these around as well. So you can switch switch up, pressing M, you can switch across, or you can go up to here and pull these across. And now because they are in, these are two different poly groups here, you could split both of these out together. So let me just delete this one, click OK. So I could split these into poly groups by going down to split and group split, click OK. And now you've got two, you've got one for this version, and one for that version. So that's how we can create an insert brush there with different options for creating hard surface, um, little nuts and bolts and fixings. So to save that brush out, you can go down here and you can go save as, and then we can save that out. I'm gonna save it on my desktop. And I just call it screw head insert brush, something like that. And save that there. Now, if you want to, you can put that in your light box. Um, again, if you want to take my course, it tells you how to do all that. Right, so the next thing I want to show you now quickly is when you've got this activated like this, we could actually create an alpha. So instead of actually creating an insert brush, we could actually pull it out of a model. So creating like a vector displacement so or an alpha. So with this, what I can do is um, most alphas are square. So what the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go into the brush or the document size, and I'm gonna set a size for this. So I'm gonna call it 1024, and we're gonna resize the document. So I'm gonna come in here, put 10224, 1K map, and in here, I'm gonna put 1024, 1024. Notice also that I've turned off pro because I want it to be independently controlled. I don't want, if I, with pro turned on, if I change the width, the height would change in pro. So once you've done that and you've got those settings, hit resize, click OK, and then the document will be resized. Now I'm going to just scroll out a little bit here, and you're going to notice this is a bit kind of weird. It's because it's taken a snapshot of it. So if I press Control and N, I can get rid of that, and then I can pull this back out like that, go into edit, fix this like this, put it in the middle. I tend to put it a little bit lower. And what I also like to do is I like to put a plane in the background. So I'm going to go to append and I'm just going to grab a poly plane, so a 3D plane here that I can put in there. And notice it might be the wrong way around, so you might need to rotate it. So I can just hold that shift key, and rotate it flat, something like that. Make sure it is flat. Okay, good. And then I can just drag this out to cover the whole thing and I can just move it down into position, something like that. Now with that facing me, I'm gonna put that into a basic material and go back into draw mode. And what I can do now is I can actually grab this document and create an alpha from it. So I'm gonna to go to alpha, I'm gonna go grab doc. That will then create this little alpha here that you can see. Now with that little alpha, we now have the ability to actually use that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna um, show you how that works now. I'm gonna go into the standard brush. I'm gonna go back to a sphere Let's go back to our original sphere here. Turn these ones off. And I just need to pump a little bit more resolution into this because at the moment there's not a lot of resolution. Actually, it's not bad. I'm gonna leave it as it is. And under alpha, I've got this Z-grab dock here. I'm gonna go into drag rectangle. And now I can just pull this straight in here. Now, the reason it's pixelated is because there's not enough resolution. So if I go into geometry and I just divide this up, maybe up to about four, and then I drag on this, you're gonna see that this is a lot sharper. Now this is governed by 
the intensity in here. So if I turn this intensity up, that's gonna be a lot stronger. So it's a little bit of get it right like that. That looks about right. Got good detail in there. You could also use this with this alpha and you could go into um, a drag dot as well and you can drag this dot around. Now this is in, uh, we can change the stroke of this drag dot. If you just click, you can do that. But if I actually drag along, it's trying to lay this down. So if I go into lazy mouse, we can actually set this lazy steps a little bit higher. And then when we drag, it's gonna drag out a series of dots like this. Well, this brush could also be saved out as well. So if you're happy with this brush, you might wanna save the brush. So you could save this as, and then you could call this screw head drag as a brush. Click save, okay. So what I'm gonna do now is shut um, Photoshop um, ZBrush down and reopen it and then I'm going to load those brushes in and show you how they work in here. Okay, ZBrush is opened up again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into Sphere 3D. I'm going to drag it out. I'm going to go straight into edit mode. I'll make the poly mesh 3D and I'm straight away going to subdivide this up to about level six. So I've got loads of resolution on this. Now the first brush I want to load in is going to be the insert brush. So I'm going to come up to brush. I'm going to go low brush. And on my desktop, I have that brush. So I have that screw head insert brush. So I'm gonna click open and you'll notice it appears straight in here. So now I can go ahead because I've got subdivision levels on this, I'm not gonna be able to drag these onto it. So what I need to do is just delete lower. And now I can drag these brushes straight onto here. Like that. Okay, now the next brush I wanna drag in here is going to be the drag brush that we just created. So I'm gonna to go to brush again, I'm gonna load the brush. This way we've got this screw head drag brush, which I've got here. And as I drag it round, you're gonna get these little pieces form like that. And by the way, if you want to, you can go one further with this. I'm just gonna bring this back like that. And if I drag with this brush like this, and then I hold the shift key, I can drag a straight line. So click, hold that shift key, get it where you want, let go, and you've got a straight line. So once again, you could save this alpha off, you know, save the brush out. You can save the alpha out as well by doing an export. So if I wanted to, I could export this alpha out and I could call this screw head alpha. It saves as a PSD file and then I can click save. So I've got that now saved out as an alpha. So if I wanted to, I could use it on a model. You know, I could use it inside of something like the surface noise. Let me go into surface noise here. Just turn this off here. Go into a standard brush. I'm gonna to go to noise now. I'm now gonna grab that alpha from my desktop. So there it is, click OK. And what I can do is I can increase the strength of this. Let me just take this mix down to zero. And I can take that scale down as well. And you're going to notice that you've got loads of these. Just increase that strength a little bit there. Click OK. And then you've got that. Now it isn't UV, so you're going to get some stretching going on. But you can see how quickly you can put a kind of pattern down very quickly using the alpha noise in there. So, for instance, certain bits I might not want. So I might want to use a bit of masking and just get rid of those like that. And then I've got this and I could, if I wanted to apply this to the mesh, hitting apply to mesh will apply this surface noise onto this model on the unmasked areas. So now, if I let go of this, you've got that embedded in there. So you can see the power of using insert brushes and also creating alpha brushes and modifying the brush stroke so you can get different effects. So hopefully this has been used to you. If you like this um, lesson, then think about taking the hard surface modeling course that I've got on Udemy with a special promotion below.